And welcome to Far North Tactical's Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. It's the local talk radio, but we are streaming live online at KFAR660.com. And now here's the host of the show from Far North Tactical, Aaron Bennett. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. Did you sleep well last night? No, actually, I didn't. I only got three hours sleep. Outstanding. Why is that? You all uh, excited about world events, or are you... uh... Out there cleaning and getting a moose? I just tossing and turning all night thinking about um, this show, actually. And usually I don't do that. No kidding. Why? What's going on? Um, all week long I got attacked by peop- by different people. And I heard people attacking us on other radio shows and things of that nature. And people coming by and seeing me and attacking me about the stance of non-voting. Okay, so non-voting is what? That's threatening their lives? Have you, by by not voting, are you making somebody else's life worse? I don't know, but uh, that that was what was on my mind last night. I actually wanted to talk about that today, but we can wait till a little bit later to do that. I got a pretty special guest today. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Steve Floyd. Oh, no kidding. What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, Steve, if, um, yeah, you, you made the claim that you were, you weren't personally gonna vote. Right. I know you had, um, Michael Dukes on your daytime show to basically play devil's advocate for you. And you're talking about the, actually, on election day, on the day of the primaries, I, I, I was still up in the air as of that morning whether or not I was going to vote, and so what I asked on the air, would, would someone please call and convince me why it is that I that, that why it is I would have to vote because I was leading toward not voting. And I'm like, look, if you can give me a good reason to do it that actually appeals to reason and not to emotion and not to, oh, come on, all the other lemmings are doing it. But here, this, this is the actual reason why you should go vote, then I'll, I'll listen to you because I like to keep an open mind. Not so open that my brain doesn't fall out, but you understand what I'm saying. I want to be... I, I like to think that I'm not just set in my ways. I mean, you know, let me let me hear the reasons. I, I didn't have a single caller that convinced me that I should. I had Michael Dukes in here with me during that hour, and he gave some good justifications, but they didn't really come down to reasons. And um, to me, there's a there's a difference in my mind because you can well, sure. you can justify your behavior, but you, it's not necessarily a, a good reason to do something. In the end, do you want do you want to know how it ends, or or, or do you want to just stop right there and no start. actually i was kind of hoping to um i was kind of hoping for if you didn't mind if you could go ahead and tell me how you came to your decision not to vote well what, what ended up happening is that he, that uh that afternoon i went home my wife asked me if uh if i was going to go vote and i said i still didn't know but i was leaning toward not and we discussed it some more and She's like, well, what about these these ballot initiatives? Aren't these important? Isn't this something that is going to affect our lives? And I'm like, well, let's let's take a look at these ballot initiatives. On the one hand, you've got the Coastal Zone Management Initiative, which I think is a bad idea. Anytime you're creating another state agency, you're going to be giving somebody power. You're going to be giving somebody else a gun to go out and do things. So I, I'm against it. However, I was thinking to myself, well, what's the point of going out and voting for it if they want it? To, to happen, even if the people vote against it, they can still, by an act of the legislature, make it happen. Right. Therefore, um, I'm just not going to bother with that one because it doesn't affect me anyway because I don't have anything to do with the coast. Basically, I would be weighing in on an issue that is hundreds of miles away from me. I decided that's not important. What about the other ballot initiative, the one about taxes? Well, okay, that's kind of a catch-22 because on the one hand, if I say no... I do not want to give me the, the the tax cut. Then what I'm saying is I'm happy with property taxes and I'm I'm happy with the level of taxation and I, I'm happy with not having an exemption on my property. On the other hand, if I say yes, raise the exemption level, I'm saying I am happy with property taxes. I just would like them to be less. And so either way, I'm I'm voting for property taxes and I'm like, you know what? I don't think I can do that either. She's like, so what about the primary? I'm like, look, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Any ticket I I pick up, I'm going to be weighing in on somebody else's party. Yeah, so uh, if you were to, to go in and vote, and the vote swung a way that you definitely didn't like, right, 
who do you go to to look to as government to say, hey, sir, mister, I don't really like the way this turned out. I mean, if something doesn't turn out the way you want it, can you go over here to the borough building? I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of assemblymen and there's a mayor, Mm -hmm. but you can't go pinpoint one person and say government is doing this to me right now. No, absolutely not. In fact, if anything, I would end up having to say that I did it to myself by participating in the system. Well, sure. So if you're voting on something, you're definitely saying that you'll go along with it. I mean, I guess the most extreme example of that would be in Nazi Germany with the Jews, right? So you have the Jewish people and the Germans, the German government essentially decided to get rid of this problem that they called the Jews, right? And that, was that the German people that decided that? That's a good question. Absolutely it was. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it argued that it was just the leaders of the people. The people themselves weren't really into okay, it. Let, but, let, but, let like, me it, ask you something. Did, did, did Hitler personally kill any Jews? I don't believe he killed a single one. No, it's not recorded that he did. Did Himmler? Himmler is one of the most famous Germans for killing Jews. I mean, he killed the most Jews. But did he really kill the most Jews? I just got there reading um, his biography, basically. He didn't personally kill a single Jew, at least not recorded, where he physically had any part in any killing of Jews. So basically it's uh, maybe they killed themselves. Maybe it was kind of a national mass suicide. No, the basically, absolutely. It was mass suicide, essentially, because they looked to government. They didn't at any point, the government, pe- the, the people that made up Germany never at any point stopped and said no. Because they had elected those officials into the offices they were in. Wasn't Hitler elected? Mm-hmm, he was. Sure. All the other officials that were in power were a part of a bureaucracy that they all looked to as government. And that government was supremely oppressive, run around and... and Controlled every aspect of everybody's life. How many? I'm just, it's a little sidebar, but do you know off the top of your head how many agencies there were in Germany, and and compare that to how many agencies there are in the United Socialist States of America? Well, <clears throat> because Germany was an upcoming state and didn't wasn't around very long before they decided to go bonkers on the rest of the world. They didn't have you know a couple hundred years like France or Germany to dominate the world. They decided to do it right out of the gate, and they didn't have much time to build as many bureaucracies. So we would, I would venture to guess that we have quite a bit more than just, them. I, we, we just, I, you hear growing up that, oh, and it was a very oppressive society, but to me it looks like it, we have an even more oppressive society when it comes to the control of your everyday life. Going back to the voting issue, I decided not to vote, and you know what? I slept the most peacefully that I had slept on any election night in the last 20 years. And do you know why I think that is? A guy called Michael Duke's show and said, oh, they just don't understand. I'm assuming he's referring to me and Josh, that voting is the most sophisticated form of warfare ever. And he's absolutely right. But he didn't even stop to think about what he's saying. Voting is warfare. They're waging warfare on each other. Absolutely. And how are they doing that with the use of force? How could you even claim that voting was warfare if there was no force behind voting? Right? Mm-hmm. So it's the first time in your life that you didn't have the use of force on somebody else. And I didn't have it on me either. Because I didn't care Right. how it turned out. So if there's a vote of whether we should kill all the, I don't know, what race should we pick? Well, don't pick a race, pick an ideology, because okay. that's the way it's going right now. It's like, uh, say we're going to kill all the all the Muslims. No, because people are okay with that. Let's <laughs> say that, um, <laughs> all the Catholic people in Fairbanks, Alaska, we decide that we're going to we're going to vote on whether we should kill them or not, and we all go down and vote on that, and they decide that the vote swings in favor of killing all the Catholics, right? Who who would stand against that? Personally, I think I would. I, I don't well, like right, that, even, though, even see, though I'm not a Catholic. People see government as so legitimate that they'll lockstep with that. Historically, 
you can look and see that people do that. Who killed all the Jews? The people did. Because it was mandated by the government to get rid of that problem. The people saw that as legitimate because they participated in that system. The hierarchy of the, of the German party didn't kill anybody. The people did. Everybody did. So, right here on a local level, if the borough decides to ban wood stoves, and we all go down and vote on it, and play that class of sophisticated warfare on each other, right? And they decide to get banned. Do we need to follow that and let them ban our wood stoves? Does anybody that votes on that have the right to stand up and say, oh, they they can't do that. It's my right to keep that wood stove. If it was your right to have that wood stove and burn whatever you wanted, why would you go vote on it? It makes no sense at all. What would motivate somebody to go vote on something that they consider a right? They don't consider it a right. They consider it a privilege. If you didn't think it was a privilege, you wouldn't vote. Bottom line. No free man in the world would go vote on his, something that is a right. Would he? Mm. That doesn't even make sense. You're uh, you're saying when you go to the poll that you don't even believe it's your right. You believe it's a privilege. And it's really kind of a crapshoot because yeah, I mean, you don't know if you're going to have enough people on your side to sure win. Sure it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you lose, how can you complain? Well, it's like going down to the uh, the fair. And saying, okay, I'm going to put down a dollar on this game, and I'm going to hope that by throwing the ball in, I'm going to win a bigger prize. I always play the balloon one because I win. Okay, well, let's say let's say that, that you, you have a history of winning with the balloon game. So you're thinking it's a pretty easy bet. You're just going to go down there and put a couple of dollars and uh, what, throw the darts, right. win the balloon. Well, let's say you miss the first shot. Okay, well, that's all right. You still have two more to go. You miss the second shot. Okay, now it's all riding on this third one, but you already paid your money. You're in. You throw it. You miss. You don't have a, a redress to get that dollar back. You chose to play the game. Sure. And if you miss, even if you, I mean, I mean, you don't have any right to complain at that point because you played the game. And I, and this is this is finally connecting for me that it, when you go out and you vote, it's the same thing. You're saying, yeah, I'll, I'll play the game. And, and and that that's a good argument. And I but I think that um, if you just look at it from that point of view. That the person arguing that you play the game in self-defense has a very good argument. But you need to take it a step further in your uh, ideology, Steve, I think. And think about it from the point of, if you do go vote, it's not just playing a crapshoot. It's not accepting the outcome. It's saying in the first place that what you're voting on is a privilege. That you don't have any rights. Your rights are fluid. Right? Your Things that you know in your heart are your God-given rights, you're saying, are fluid and up for grabs on a decision of the will of the people. You want to see if somebody has a testimonial of why they don't want to vote? All right, 458 talk is the number. Good morning. All right, they didn't hold. Oh, (laughs) yeah, go ahead and call in. Give us your testimonial why you don't want to vote. Maybe Frank Turney will call in and tell us he decided not to vote. No, I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe Randy will. Randy? Yeah, he'll call in and say why why it is that, that you've actually finally made sense to him and, and he's decided not to put everything on the line and, and go with the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. I, I just, um, I've been hearing a lot of the, the argument for voting in self-defense. I mean, a lot of people have come by and yelled at me. I'm not going to name any names. Some of them I don't even know anyway by name. I just decided to pop in randomly and scream and yell at me. But... Um, can I do that? Can I just stop by and get things off my chest, my screen? And use well, it like you do a, sometimes. Like, like, <laughs> it depends on if I forgot to pay you when I leave. <laughs> but it's not its not just about self-defense. It's about self-respect. Definitely. But let, somebody right. called in with a testimonial why they're not going to vote. 458 talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It is Hillbilly Man. Hillbilly Man. Go ahead. I, I ain't going to vote. What? I ain't going to vote because I don't consider... Playing the game, like you say, to be of any value whatsoever. Uh, I'm all I could possibly do, occasionally maybe on some state issue, I suppose. See, I'm outside the borough, so I'm going to vote in the borough election. And I'm AIP, so I don't vote in the primaries. And I wouldn't vote for a, a Mormon anymore more than I would a Muslim or anything else. You know, and I don't believe. Well, the way I look at it is that the devil one time was talking to Jesus 
And he said, man, I'll, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you bow down to me. He says, because they're all put in my hand, and I give the power of them to anybody I choose. Now, Jesus didn't argue with him and say that wasn't true. He just said he'd take it his own way. But the fact of the matter is, at this point, we're still under orders to pray to our Heavenly Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means it ain't being done. Or we wouldn't have to pray for it. And so that means that the governments are still in the hands of the devil, and he gives the power to anybody he chooses. All right, so if, if, you, think, if you think uh, he'll believe from a... Uh, Purely from a religious point of view, and I know your religious leanings anyway. Um, I'm plumb fall over. I don't just lean. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's good. Um, from that point of view, if uh, you know, you, you especially hear um, the Christian community screaming that we have to vote for um, Mitt Romney, uh, obviously because Obama's so evil. But they all know that Mitt Romney's pretty evil himself. I mean, even your champions like Glenn Beck and so on and so forth. Well, Glenn Talk Beck about... changed his mind this week. Now he's saying mm. he's, new, he's the new George Washington. Try to, imagine, try to imagine the damaged relationships that have been happening for the last four years in this city between people who would rather see Romney and people that would rather see Obama. No, I, I understand that, but my, my question to you was, um, do you think that if somebody does go out and vote for Mitt Romney to um, enhance their, in their mind, to enhance their liberties and basically to vote in their savior, that they're serving two masters? Well, they're trying to. Jesus said no man can serve two masters, so actually they're simply serving the devil, but they think they're serving Jesus. Right, that was my point, but anyway. <laughs> right. And Jesus said the time will come when they'll kill you and think that they're doing Jesus a favor. Yep. It'll be that bad. Yeah, well, we've seen that historically, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks, Hillbilly. Appreciate the phone call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. This is the wake-up call. Who's this? Good morning, it's Al. Al, go ahead. Well, I did vote. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out for you? Well, you know, it just worked. It's like you were saying, you get into the crapshoot, and and uh, on a local level, though, I think it was important. Um, what what I was getting that... to was your your analogy on, uh, you know, the balloon or the game or the crapshoot is, you know, if I choose not to vote, and, you know, we'll take the wood stove thing and, and say, well, it's my right to burn wood, you know, it'll financially cost me to fight that and, and try to prove that I'm right, in, you know, in a court. Now, what if you do vote and lose? Then the same issue. Either you're going to get ready, you'll have to make the choice. Either you're going to continue to burn wood and fight the system, or you're, you're, going, to, you're going to comply. Yeah, but that same argument could be used for all the people that voted against Hitler. Well, we voted voted against our pre I mean, we killed a lot of Indians in this country, didn't we? Sure. Well, By no, vote? actually, the people didn't. The, people the government did. did. Well, the government. That's did. from people the that's from the Nazi point of view. Yeah, right. so, I mean, we don't have to go overseas to find you know that kind of carnage. No, but we sure do, don't we? Well, you keep bringing it up. I say, you know. No, I'm saying we sure do go overseas and make that carnage, <laughs> oh, yeah, don't we? Well, you, know, you know, it's a bigger issue, but you know. Sure it is, but no, my. You know, I my mean, vote locally. Uh, I took it a step farther than the the crapshoot there. I said, um, I mean, think about it, Al. If this whole town, if they were trying to make us vote on the wood stove issue. And everybody in this town that loves liberty said, I'm not going to go vote because I'm not going to compromise my liberty. Yeah. Do you think that, how toothless do you think that that vote would be? They wouldn't dare. If real men would stand up for their liberty, they wouldn't dare because the government is us. You, you cannot, it cannot function without us doing it to ourselves. Well, with that analogy, if you had that kind of outcry, it would never end up on a ballot. Well, it, well, no, about, that's not true, because any do-gooder could go put something on the ballot. Well, that's exactly how they get on there. But if the people no, in Nazi the, Germany would have stood together and said, we don't care what government says because we are government. The government can't effectually do anything. They can't build anything. They can't produce anything. They don't have any manpower. And everything that they do is done through us. All the two legs and two eyes and two hands that do everything, every bidding of the government is us. If those people would have stood together and said, no, a man has a natural right to life, the Nazi government would never have had the Holocaust of the Jews on their hands. 
Well, take, take it take it that far, though, here, Aaron, and, and Al, think about this. Right now, we're all upset because the borough has already passed an ordinance that will go into effect that will come out and punish us financially for burning wood. All right, it's already going to go into effect whether or not, no matter, you know, if, if we don't vote against it. Now, let's say we do go out there and we vote and we do vote against it. We're basically saying that they have the right to go ahead and make whatever ordinance they want to. What if the, the next time around it's not wood stoves? Maybe the next time around it's a it's a pledge of allegiance to the borough. Maybe if the next time around it, it's you must come out and come by and worship. Right, but people don't want to accept those extremes. Luka, uh, no, I know, but, but make the extreme because that's that that is the reductio ad al absurdum. In in any argument, you have to take it to the extreme or else the argument falls apart. Take it to the extreme. Reductio ad absurdum. Right. It's actually. It's, I don't believe it's any different at all. Exactly. Al, what do you think? I mean, well, if 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 the ordinance, if, if the borough over there passed an ordinance that said, you must come by and worship Luke Hopkins, <laughs> and, and Tammy Wilson said no, that's not right, and she got together a petition, and a whole bunch of people had this petition to go and vote. No, we don't have to go worship Luke Hopkins. Would you vote on that issue? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, I, I guess you, you you convinced me. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello, hello. This is Gene. Gene, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I uh, I would like to point out that you guys in the past have talked a lot about supporting the Constitution and how you believe in it, and uh, all those guys that uh, made the Constitution, they were voting to make that what it was. Well, if you've listened in the past, we uh, have tore down most of the uh, institutions that they set up, um, at least. Um, intellectually, you have uh, guys like Rothbard and uh, Hans Hopp and um, Lou Rockwell who have studied that down pretty hard and have come up with the um, the, impos- the concept of the impossibility of limited government. And in a free entry society where everybody's allowed to jump in and uh, in a system where in our system being very unique in the fact that they not only gave power to the Congress to uh, tax, but also to legislate law. And what they mean by that is to create law. That built a, a, a system of fluid laws. And you see in 200 years that things get progressively worse, no matter how much we vote, no matter how much we we pick up this issue or pick up that torch. As long as law is fluid like that, it's obviously going to be um, a degradation of liberties. So well, I'm not going to – I love – uh, the founders. I spent a lot of my time reading their works and reading where they got their ideas from. You, I mean, it's not good enough, in my opinion, to just say, oh, the founders said this and that. Where did they get their ideas from? So you got to pull back to uh, John Locke and um, even farther to, I um, can't remember that guy that we quote all the time, Dave. There's so many you know, <laughs> names out there. So you got to um, look at where they you know got. That, that old dead guy. Well, I've, I've, lo- I've looked at a lot of that myself. But what I'm getting at is. The way the real problem comes is not the voting or not voting. It's that a majority rules. See, they need to have like 95% no. to make a new law and change it. No, I, I, I totally disagree that it's the majority rules the problem. I mean, obviously, our government was, uh, they called democracies the biggest evils of their of the mm-hmm. age. So they created a republic, and they created a representative republic. And in the very beginning, for a man to vote, he had to own property, which I think if they still, if we still followed that rule today, things would be a lot better than they are. I definitely think that because obviously the have-nots would not be taken from the haves. So if you had anybody that didn't own property, wasn't allowed to vote, do you think that people would be uh, able to own their property tax-free? You bet they would. What's the most oppressive well, thing going on in this borough? The most oppressive thing going on in this borough is that nobody in this borough can own property. Nobody can. Well, I, di- I disagree. You look at the voting with the property right now. There's more houses for sale now than there was in the 80s when the population of the state went from over 700,000 down to 500,000. They're voting with their feet right now in this borough. When the people are voting with their feet, if enough of them move out, there are nothing be but the borough employees here to support it. Well, right, but we're, we're saying the same thing. You're just twisting the vote word. All right. Hey, brother, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. We're coming up against the break here at the bottom of the hour. The Fox News is on the way. If you'd like to participate in the program, a couple of ways you can do it. You can uh, call in at 458-TALK, 
Outside of the area code, it's 907-458-TALK. Or you can join us in the chat room at KFAR660.com, where we happen to be streaming live as well. Plus, you'll find archived shows online, so you can listen to some of these previous shows that we've been talking about. KFAR660.com. You can also check it out at our YouTube channel, Radio Free Fairbanks, and uh, log on to the blog, which is patriotslament.blogspot.com. Keep it here for more of Far North Tactical Saturday Morning Wake Up Call right after the Fox News on KFAR. All right, welcome back to the Saturday Morning Wake Up Call right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the unscheduled special guest here today. Aaron threw that on me. Hey, Aaron, now, I had another thought here. Aaron Bennett, of course, from Far North Tactical in the studio with us. Uh, on this voting issue, it's kind of like an office pool. You know, I know an awful lot of people that will come together and they'll buy tickets together, like for the, the rubber ducky race, or they'll... They'll put their money in together on a football game outcome. Sure. And if you choose not to participate with them, then you don't get any of the winnings. But you don't also, also you don't lose any money. And it's amazing how much pressure you can get from people who want you to play that game. Because they want your money. Because <laughs> they want the legitimacy of what they're doing. Sure. And, and I mean, it, does that hold up on the same way, that that's kind of like what voting is? In, in... I think so. I think so. Because... Um... I've had a, people yell at me this week, uh, not because of my stance, but because I've gotten to people that they know, and they're not very happy about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to say something. If you're on hold, just hang on for a second. I wanted to say something to that last caller, uh, at least to his question, not necessarily to him in general. I'm not trying to attack him. But um, he was talking about the way that I view the founders, and I think that obviously the founders were very wise. For the By and large, you look at their educations, they're pretty impressive. Um, at a young age, they were impressive, and they came up with a, a system the best they knew how. And you gotta, you have to, you can't just look at the things that they said, which is what, what most people do. Unfortunately, you gotta look at where they pulled their ideas from, and they looked to ancient law and to natural law and to common law to come up with, you know, and they write those things down themselves. But now, um, you can't get away from the fact that they created a system that is allowed to legislate law, which in a society where we're allowed to create law, not just to look at what is natural law, but we're rather we're able to create what they call paper law it, that car- carries with it fines and imprisonment. And you look around and you think about every aspect of your life, which we've talked about so many times. They say that America is the freest place in the world, but that is a reflection of an America once was. And America once was, had the freest market in the world, which created the most wealth. And having the wealthiest people in the world, it's very hard for a government to oppress a capitalist society that's running on a free market where everybody has boatloads of cash. Where your average guy can go make more money than the government does. Bill Gates has way more net worth than the United States government, doesn't he? Mm Mm-hmm considering the fact that the net worth of the United States government is debt. So it's very hard to hold that kind of people in check as far as their liberties go. And I believe that the free markets were how we got to where we were today. And we started out with nil law, and it took 200 years to create enough law for us to see what we have today, where every aspect of your life is under regulation, every aspect of it. I mean, how many times have we talked about just your vehicle? You know, your your car itself gets registered. You get licensed. You get insured against... You, you basically have to license the vehicle against something that might happen. You have to pay for the road that it goes on. You pay for every aspect of that, and it carries with it fines and imprisonment. The whole nine yards of it does. And if you think about it in that analogy, every aspect of your life follows that same pattern. Right down to your marriage, mm-hmm. which gets licensed, or your 501c3 if you want to go religious, right? How do those things happen? They happen because of an abandonment of natural law in favor of legislated paper law. That was created by the founders. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. Look at what that got us today. And so we've went from a free-minded people that cared about liberty to what we are today in a system of 
legislated law where everybody feels oppression from every aspect of their life. And so they go down to the polls and they try and vote themselves more liberty. Because voting took all their liberty, where are they going to go to get it back? <laughs> right? That's the argument you hear, is that, well, it was it was done to us incrementally, we have to get it back incrementally. Sure, and what they mean by that, incrementally means we voted it the way it is. So, is voting legitimate? I don't know. Think about it like this. The wood stove ban. If everybody that was going to go vote on that decided, no, I have the right to burn wood. I'm not going to go down and vote away my rights or vote for my rights. No one can make me vote for something that is already mine. And if you do, is it a right? If you say you have the right to own guns in America, if the Second Amendment is the Second Amendment, then why is there the NFA rules? That, that, I think that's a really, really good analogy right there, comparing it to the Second Amendment, because you will have people that will not come out and get politically involved in any other issue, but they go absolutely bats not when it comes to the Second Amendment issue, because they think, as the most well-armed slaves in the history of the world, that somehow having those guns gives them freedom. Yeah, but in 1984, the government decided that they could have those mm -hmm. guns well, 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 well regulated. Uh, exactly, and the Supreme Court has reaffirmed over and over again that they have, that the legislature has the right to regulate. You bet they do. So let's say they decide in the next round of regulation... They did in the 90s. ...that you must register every gun that you own. Well, you already, in a, in a way, you kind of do, but, I mean, there's a huge misconception there, too. But in the 90s, they regulated the guns all the way down to a 10-round mag, and you couldn't have a bayonet mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And, I mean, you couldn't have a buttstock that slid. I mean, come on, they regulated so many aspects here. Just because that band sunsetted mm -hmm. doesn't mean jack. For 10 years, or was it 8 years, no. that was in effect. Exactly. And And what did we do about it? No, I, I don't think anything, really. Well, of course, because it was voted, well, because we don't consider guns guns a right in this uh -huh. country. We absolutely do not. We consider it a privilege. And and if you if you think that somehow you have a right to just go out and have a gun, go out and try to get yourself a machine gun. Or just go out and try and get yourself, I mean, try being an 18-year-old and going out uh, and getting a pistol. Yeah, or being not. a 17-year-old and trying to go out and get a rifle. Nope. That that's is, not a right. That's a privilege. It is verboten. You, oh, exactly. Well, and, well, well, let's hear some more testimonials of why people decided not to vote. <laughs> 458 talk, the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? You still there? Uh, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. I, I, you know, I'm really trying to understand you. Um, and I'm glad you brought up the Second Amendment. But first, I want to ask you, you said that we didn't kill the Indians. The government did. And then you said that... <laughs> The that German was that was meant to be a, that was meant to be a joke. He he was he was tying it in that how mo most people make some kind of a delineation that somehow it wasn't the people of America that killed the Indians it was the government. He w he was showing the absurdity of it because obviously it's the same principle in that the Germans killed the Jews the Americans killed the Indians. Got it. Got it. Right. So I've been doing this show for a long time so uh, I have to take things progressively because I can't just come in here and say something all at once because no one will get what I'm talking about so I spent about um, three months with Joshua my brother and we pointed out that every single thing that happens happens from the state almost all violence comes from the state actually all violence mm -hmm. does come from the state like when you talk about killing the Indians and somebody called in and said well you know we killed all the Indians we said no the government killed all the Indians so we make that point over and over and over again that nothing happens that the state Nothing bad happens that you can't point to the state. I mean, our economy, uh, our regulation, violence, all those things come from the state, right? So yeah. now that I've gotten everybody to accept that analogy, people stopped calling in and arguing that it was the, it's obviously the state that does all these things to us. Now it's time for me to turn that around and say, aren't we the state? So for a person that's been listening to me for a while... Those things have to go full circle, because now I'm turning it back around and saying, well, is it possible for anything, any of those things to happen when we are the state? What is the state? The state is us. You can't go to any building and say, this is government, right? You can't walk up to, you cannot take me by the hand and take me over to somebody and say, this is government. Let's talk to him about all the things that are bad. 
Because we make up government, right? Yeah, I'm with you now. Okay, so to some people it might sound like I'm a hypocrite, but I'm taking people on a couple year long journey to try and get them to see what is wrong. Because I can't just tell people, oh, here's how it is, blah, blah, blah. So I spent three months arguing that the state is the cause of everything. And people finally accepted that obviously that was unarguable. So now I'm coming back and saying, we're the state. All right. All right. Thanks for the call, brother. 458-TALK is the number. You've got it on the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, good morning. What's on your mind? Well, um, Aaron, I, 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 I love you like a brother, and and, and, uh, 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 and I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, but your logic flopped. How so? In the in this last election, which it was a primary election, but uh, uh, seventy eight percent of the people that are registered to vote didn't vote. No, it I, made absolutely no difference at all. No, right. I I understand that. I'm not I'm not asking people to um, just not go vote just for the sake of not voting, Winston. I mean, right. I. I you call in a lot. I appreciate I appreciate your views. I I definitely think that at least one person in Fairbanks gets it, and his name might be Winston. But um, well, I'm I, I'm not actually in Fairbanks. I'm outside. Well, that well, explains a lot, right there. Well, there you go. There you go. Okay, so nobody in Fairbanks gets it. <laughs> nobody in Fairbanks. <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm I think you know what I'm trying to say though. It's not about right, right, all those right. people that that didn't vote, and it's about you know, the simplest one is the wood stove issue. Right. It's to say, to go in there and vote in the first place is to say that you don't have the right to burn wood, isn't it? Um, um, uh, not necessarily. Well, uh, sure, you're saying uh, it's a privilege. Otherwise, you wouldn't uh, vote on it. If you knew in your heart that you had the right to burn wood regardless of what anybody said, you wouldn't right, vote on uh, it. The, the the thing about it is, is, is uh, uh, if you allow the state... Uh, 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 if you allow them to regulate you, and you make no protest whatsoever. Yeah, but I think you absolutely uh, allow them when you go vote because if no, the vote no, doesn't, no, Winston, if the vote doesn't go in your favor, against, it, it don't matter whether the vote goes in my favor or against my favor. I'm going to burn my wood. Well, uh, right. Uh, so you have no yeah. business voting. Because well, you're you're not going to comply with the outcome. Right, do right. you know do you well, know I, that they're they're um they're literally talking, if you Google it and check it out, they are talking about changing the ballots. And when you sign your name, they want to put on there that you're going to agree to all the terms of that ballot. I think it's brilliant. They should I mean you already are anyway, in my opinion. When you sign that ballot you're absolutely agreeing to the terms of that ballot. Well, you're now, or, you're uh, already entering into a contract. You wouldn't sign your name in the first place. Well, uh, 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 the thing about it is, 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 is the uh, when I walk into uh, in front of the, the 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 poll workers and I validate my name, uh, uh, then I. But now I will, uh, um, um, uh, if they if they try to pull that on me, what I will do is I'll tell them I will not agree. Uh, uh, Winston, have you uh, ever signed a contract in your life? Uh, I have signed a few contracts. And where, where do you sign a contract? Usually at the bottom. That's right. And what is okay. what spells out a contract? Okay. Doing what what I agree to do. And if, if there's something in the contract... No, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm the, talking about right. in legal terms, not not in natural law terms. In our legal system's terms of what a contract is, a contract's an agreement between any two parties that's signed at the bottom, right. essentially. You and I could write up a piece of paper, and if we both signed it at the bottom, I could take it to the ringer through court if you didn't abide by that. Right. That's, that's one but thing see, that our government still respects. Now, you know that when you go in and sign that contract called your ballot at the bottom, you are agreeing to the terms and conditions above it. Not necessarily. In, in a court of law, you bet. Mm -hmm. You bet. Uh, 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 if 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 I sit down, you present me a contract. I walk into Far North Tactical, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I'm going to buy a gun from you on uh, uh, on a on, on, on a pay as I can basis. Which people and I do read all the, the time. Contract. Okay. Uh, and I read through the contract, and there's something in there that uh, uh, that I do not agree with. Okay, you and I, when I'm signing that contract, I mark through that and say, listen, this I will not agree with. And you initially it up there that, okay, I, I, I can see why you don't agree with this, and we will make come to some other accommodation. And then you'll initial it, and then I go down there, and then I sign the contract bottom and you sign the contract at the bottom we have both come to that agreement i don't sign any contract without reading it um uh, uh, i don't know what and, that has uh, to do with the ballot you don't get well, to pick uh, if, and choose if, well if 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 uh if i walk in there uh i'm go in and i vote for the uh however i wish to vote um uh, uh uh, or if I even uh, uh, desire to, uh, I, I, I am strongly believing in in in, in writing in Mickey Mouse and right. none of the above. And uh, but it doesn't uh, change nobody. the fact that that President Obama is President Obama. I mean, I mean, you can't you can't right, go in right, there and right. say, well, I, I'm I'm going to nullify this vote if it doesn't go the way I want. Winston, we got to let you go. Right. We got a, Do, a bunch of does on pr- does President Obama have the right to in, indefinitely detain American citizens? According to the Congress, he does. That's right. And where did they get that power? Oh, well, didn't we give it to them? Right. Yeah. But it's because they voted. Right. And we're agreeing to it because they voted on it. The American people should be up in arms, at least mentally, and saying, stick it in your hind quarter. Because that's bull crap. We're supposed to be the freest place in the world. <laughs> Do you think that those powers are going to be rescinded when Mitt Romney becomes president? Uh, didn't those powers come into place under Bush in the first place? I mean, no, I mean, not the na- not the national and, and, detention. Well, it was it was set in motion though. I mean, it's it's basically an extension of things. Right, that have it's been an extension that, of the Patriot way. Act, and um, but those things are not going to go away when Mitt Romney becomes president. So how is Mitt Romney better? Do you think he's going to get in there and say no, we're not going to intent in, in, indefinitely detain people? Well, uh, even if he doesn't enforce it, it's still on the books. Sure. 458 Talk is the number. Moving on. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Testimonial time. Randy. Yeah. I just wanted to say I I see a lot of your points, and I think there's some points to this voting issue that I agree with you guys on, and and you and you and I may both agree on some of these points. And uh, and there's one point that I'm halfway in agreement with you on. But the points are is uh, I think everyone should have the right to vote. I think you might agree with that. That I would not agree with that. Absolutely not. Because oh. when you're voting, you're playing the most sophisticated warfare of all time. Okay, so if I'm voting, I'm voting for the stick to be pointed, or the gun, rather, to be pointed in one direction or the other. I don't think that anybody has the right to vote away my rights. Does anybody have the right to vote on the issue of whether I can burn wood or not? Absolutely not, Randy. Would you? Nobody has the right to vote on that. Did, did the did the Nazi hierarchy have the right to vote away the right to life of the Jewish people? No. Dang right they didn't. But but for instance, do you believe that we all should have the right to vote for Natalie Howard into the Borough Assembly? No, I don't even think Natalie Howard would agree with that at okay. this point. Okay. Well, we. Do. I I think that um, the the men that sat in judgment over the Nazis in the Nuremberg trial had it right when they said, you know what, for all the for all the appeals to government, which is what the Nazi party did, they said we were doing what we were told. They said the government told us, right? Uh-huh. It was like Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was so confused and bewildered that he was being put on trial because he said, how can I be put on trial? I was government. No. And that he was voted in right. he every was single so time. He was so confused about what was going on. He really was. If you watch his trial, he was just like, what? Well, I can't be put on trial for crimes that I didn't commit. He never believed he committed a crime. So the judges at the Nuremberg trial, they had an interesting case there because they were dealing with the people that were highly sophisticated and very, very well educated, okay? So they were dealing with this Germany who, up to the point of World War II, was called the country of poets and scholars. Mm-hmm. That's what it was called. 
because they were more educated, more etiquette, more everything than any other nation in the world, including ours at that time. We were a bunch of backwards country bumpkins just getting our upcoming. I think some of us still are. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. And they had to go ahead and decide that these men, just because government said they could and the people sanctioned that, didn't they? Mm-hmm. You bet they did. There would have been no Nazi regime without lockstep from the people, I can guarantee you that. Well, you don't agree with me on point number one, but maybe No, let number... me let me finish my oh, point. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? Uh-huh. So the Nuremberg trial decided that there was a higher duty than government in all men. Uh-huh. Okay? okay? So how can we go back and say, knowing that, that the borough building... Over there has a right to make an ordinance that people should go vote on to vote away other men's liberties. Right. There is a higher duty than that. Yeah. No man has the right to vote away another man's liberties, do they? Uh, no, I agree with you on that. They, well, you participate in that. Well, point number two that maybe you and I agree on, on is, as I think everyone should have the right not to vote. If they don't want to vote, they should have that right. I think you and I probably agree on that one. And then number three. No, is, no, you're oh, no? You're, you're okay. putting a spin on what I'm saying, okay? Well, no, it's not. It's not right about now. having the right to not vote. I'm not talking about a guy has the right to sit home and not vote. I'm saying a guy has the right to whatever is his own, regardless uh-huh. of a vote. Yeah, and that's I, totally I different that. than you trying to say that I agree that a guy has a right to not vote. Okay, I, sh- I shouldn't say you do or not agree. These are just my my points. And my third point that I believe in, and you can tell me if you agree with this or not. I wrote down here, I said, no one should be forced or coerced or paid to vote. Like I've heard some people say, well, if they don't vote, we're going to take away their permanent fund. I'm totally against that. If only if people want to go out of their way and vote, they should, they can vote. But I'm against paying people or coercing people to yeah, vote. Yeah, think about the idea of the permanent fund in the first place. Mm-hmm. That's an entitlement that everybody thinks they're entitled to. Yeah. Everybody wants to have cheaper energy in this area, right? Everybody does. But we want our entitlements. People just don't get it, Randy. They don't get it. And if you, if if you we, took that if, permanent fund that we pay out to everybody every year and took that same amount of money and applied it to the price of gasoline that we're playing in the first place, we'd end up paying, what, what like a buck a gallon? Uh-huh. Here's the ridiculous part. If we would um, tell the EPA to shove off for the same reasons that we would tell the wood stove ban to shove off and let mm-hmm. any individual that feels like it, and I mean any, that wants to put together... Whatever he wants to put together to go extract oil, where is he going to sell it? To Russia? Logistically, he's not going to sell it to Russia. He's going to sell it right here. Will we have cheaper oil? Yes, we'll have 25 cent a gallon oil by the predictions of people that have contemplated those things from an economic standpoint. We would be at about 25 cents a gallon. If Alaska would stop having this collective mentality and start believing in individual liberties and individual rights and shut out all this other BS, we would have 25 cents a gallon gas nationwide because we would support the whole nation. I, I just had something connect in my head here, or one of the points that Randy made, and, and maybe maybe Randy can clarify it. Maybe, Aaron, you can jump on this here. Uh, you're talking about how nobody should be paid to vote or nobody should be coerced to vote, but in a sense, every time you vote, that's exactly what you're doing. When you vote for when there's a school bond on the, mal- on the on the ballot, you're talking about taking money away from somebody. So you're penalizing people, whether they vote or not. When you go out there and you vote to have a property tax reduction, you're voting to put money back in people's wallets. So you are basically bribing people to get out there and be involved in that process too. So either right, way, or you, or you're taking from the people that are entitled, so to speak, to that money right. from property tax. Like the like the borough employees, you know. And what and, I think is great is that we vote all the time. I mean, we all get out and vote on the the um, tax cap, and then they just go and and circumvent that and raise the mill rate. Well, and or they raise the value of your home. I mean, right. you look at you that, look that's at, what I mean. They raise the value e- of your home. Economically, right now, our houses should not be worth what they are valued at. You, no, I, I'm a, trying to buy a house right now, and the guy I'm trying to buy it from wants 130000 He bought it for 220000 He wants to sell it to me for 130, And I went to the banks, and they're like, we can't loan on that. It's, it's just not worth that right now. Right. And the original note on that house is 220000 okay? And they won't give me a loan for 130. No. 
they want him to pay it down to like closer to a hundred for me to be able to buy the house. But the property tax assessed for that thing, they just came, they're raising it. It's more than he paid for it originally. Well, there, there was just an auction here. I, you, we may have mentioned it last week, uh, a, a, a public outcry auction for um, houses that had been foreclosed on. Mm-hmm. And out of those houses, there were 12 of them for sale. There was a net $900,000 less than appraised value. <laughs> And now I, I, you, you look at you, you look at that whole issue of the property taxes, and if we were getting taxed that, on the real value of our houses, it would be much less than what we're paying now. Which, by the way, that's how Luke Hopkins gets his um, numbers that he saved everybody money. Yeah. On taxes. By reducing the rate. Right. By reducing the rate, but they actually didn't reduce it because they raised the property tax value. And, and he didn't do anything to reduce it either. That was an automatic reduction because of the tax cap that we all went out and participated in. Hey, Randy, love you like a brother. Thank you. Bye-bye. 458 talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Oh, good morning, guys. Hey, who is this? Okay. Uh, this is TJ. How you doing? TJ, good. What's on your mind? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Um, just in uh, response uh, to the... Uh, uh, not participating in voting, um, and I, I'm not sure if you guys talked about this earlier. I just uh, wanted to see what you thought about it, because when you pay your borough taxes, essentially um, your property taxes, you're actually funding the process. So, uh, like I said, I just wanted to see what you guys thought about that. I don't know if you already addressed that. Thanks. All right, I, I am addressing that by trying to to get everybody out of this mentality that they're going to vote themselves liberty. Mm-hmm. So... How are we ever going to change the property tax issue? I mean, you have what percentage of people here are gleaning off of that? 56? Mm. No, no. In terms of the actual number of people that work for government of one layer, one layer or another here in the borough, yeah. we're up over 60% of people who are actually <laughs> getting paid. And on that, that includes the federal employees, the state employees, the city employees. Right, so how does anybody in their right mind think that they're going to vote and win? Yeah, you you can't because you've got you're outnumbered. But we can vote in self-defense. Right. Even if you do, let's say you're accosted on the street, Aaron, by some um, thug. He says, "Give me your money, or I'm going to beat you." Mm-hmm. You're going to fight him, or are you just going to give him the money? Um, me? Yeah, personally. Uh, definitely fight. Okay. Let's say he's got three other guys with him. I'd still fight him. Well, you're, you're, of course, you're a badass, but that's another issue entirely. But I personally, I think I would probably say, you know what? I'm, it's not worth losing my beautiful looks. I mean, my face is much more important than than my money. Here, take my money. Bye-bye. Now they take the money, they run off. They got what they wanted. I'm still alive. I still have my face intact. Sure. And, and, and that's why you pay your taxes, too. Up against the clock. We'll see you next hour. All right. Welcome to Patriot's Lament right here on KFAR which is a production of Bighorn Enterprises. Uh, now joining us from Far North Tactical this morning, it's uh, Aaron Bennett. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. Actually, you're the special guest today. Oh, outstanding. I love to be that. Uh, and I feel so special. <laughs> I want to read something from Lou Rockwell really quick. Go right ahead. Um, it isn't a coincidence that governments everywhere want to educate children. Government education, in turn, is supposed to be evidence of the state's goodness and its concern for our well-being. The real explanation is less flattering. If the government's propaganda can take root as children grow up, those kids will be no threat to the state apparatus. They'll fasten the chains to their own ankles. Which is exactly what happens. I was thinking about that here, uh, actually coming Five up seconds the, ago. Well, yeah, yeah, coming up during the break here, that how I know so many people who intellectually, they're very, very close to where you are and where you've you've been bringing me over the last couple of years in terms of saying, hey, look, we're going down this statist road no matter what party you say you belong to, no matter how, if you are participating, you are exerting force on other people and, and creating a more massive state. A lot of people that are almost there intellectually, but they just cannot take that action that violates the way that they've been inculcated. And I, I think that's what it comes down to is that having gone through the public school system as a kid from the minute I entered in preschool, actually, if I think about it, all the way through, and for my case, the five and a half years it took me to finish my four-year degree in uh, Arizona State University, that entire process did nothing to inculcate personal freedom 
and it did everything to train me to be a statist. It trained me to not only accept, but to violently cheer on the expansion of the state in every aspect of my own personal life and in everybody else's. And I, I think that that's the way it is with most people. You go through the public indoctrination, you get through the other side, and you happily snap on your little angle. You know, it may not be an actual chain today. It's more like an angle monitoring system. You know, it's like, oh, yes, I'm free to go and to come and go as I please. Let me just snap that right on there and make sure the government knows where I am. The most sophisticated form of warfare of all time. Hmm, it is. Definitely. Hmm. Uh, and and speaking of warfare, I do. I, I want I want to mention. You know, I I caused. I mean, I I, I took I took my stick yesterday, my metaphorical stick, and rammed it right up into the hornet's nest yesterday, when I suggested to a couple of my coworkers that we almost had it coming, in terms of what has gone on at these embassies. We now have twenty three embassies around the world, American embassies, where there are violent protests going on right outside the gate. And some of them, we've got more people dead today. It's not just those four Americans who were killed on Tuesday. And, you know, somebody asked me, well, why don't they like us? <laughs> and, and I said, well, you know, if you think about it, um, going back to 1986, when some crazy man bombed a, a discotheque in Germany and killed some American soldiers, the U.S. government, under Ronald Reagan, who everybody seems to worship like he's some kind of a demigod, ordered us to bomb Libya, and the Americans absolutely ate it up. You know, hey, they, and we blamed Libya for that. And you know what? Maybe the government had something to do with it. Maybe it didn't. But the people of Libya had nothing to do with it. How many women and children would we kill when we bombed Libya in 1986? Not enough. Well, obviously, because a bunch of them went on to somehow hold a grudge. You know, I can't imagine why. They hate us because we're the freest people in the world, Steve. Oh, is that why it is? Is that why they hate us? Or do they hate us because we've been meddling in their in, in, in their personal affairs and in the affairs of their own countries and trying to tell them how they should live and killing them if they don't do what we tell them to do? Maybe that's why they hate us. Don't we do that here on a local level? Oh, well, well, to a certain degree, it's not necessarily as the most violent. sophisticated form of warfare of well, all exactly. time. Exactly. You see, we have not yet got to the point where we have a mob surrounding somebody and pulling them out of the out of their store. Although I, I'll tell you what, from the sounds of it, it sounds like maybe a couple of those people that have been coming in and harassing you, maybe they're part of the uh, ITA, maybe they're part of some conservative group here in, in Fairbanks. Maybe they can get their buddies together and come over and, and pull you out of your store and, well, and rip, your, will... <laughs> rip your flag down and, and burn you in your flag. It, that's interesting that you uh, – I know I like to pick on Republicans a lot, and that's just – and the reason I do is not because I love liberals, so to speak. It's um, because they're the ones that are supposed to be championing liberty, especially in their own minds. Um, and I get most of my – Actually, no, I take that back. I get all of my resistance from the right, definitely. Anybody that comes in and yells and screams at me that I'm part of the problem and this and that, it's never uh, left-leaning people. But I did have a uh, whole group of kids come by from the university. I say kids, they're actually in their mid-20s. And they all came by to say that they were flaming liberals. Actually, the first thing out of the main guy's mouth was, I would never buy anything from this store. <laughs> when he walked in, I'm like, oh my gosh. And why are you even here? But they came actually just to um, meet me, I guess, just talk to me for a minute. And uh, basically all they wanted to say was they they got what I was saying, that they'd come in a circle from their left-leaning thinking to basically they, they claim to be minarchist, which I put a pretty good argument against that. Obviously, <laughs> you can't be a minarchist, but... Yeah. Anyway, and, and for they, someone who's never heard that term, that would be the having a minimum amount of government. Instead, you, know, that you always hear people say, oh, I'll, I, all I, what we want is limited government. Right, a minarchist is just a, a limited government person, but obviously that doesn't work. And that's funny for a liberal to say that he's a limited government type of person. That made me laugh. But it's just interesting that they would come in and say that they... Uh, they're getting what we're talking about. And then in the same week, I have Republican-leaning people come in and say they want to pull me out of the store and bash my brains out. <laughs> I just, who, who's the tolerant one? You definitely see the Republican, uh, the right people are definitely not tolerant. I mean, you have people like John McCain and um, stuff like that stand up and say that we need to kill everybody. Uh, we need to go over and 
take out Iran right now. You never, you don't hear the left side saying that for sure. So anyway, neither here nor there. You're just some kind of a damn hippie, aren't you? No, definitely <laughs> not. It's like somebody just uh, texted me about your comment about people dragging me out of my store. Somebody texted and said, uh, Aaron's store has real bullets. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know what? All, all we need, though, is that for your armed guards to be told that they can't use the, the bullets, just like what happened in the embassies this week. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. All of our lines are on hold. What do you want to do with them? No, I guess we'll take them. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Hey, this is Claudio Hardwin. Claudio, good. Que pasa? Hey, uh, hey I, I have a thought here. You know, when the Bible say that uh, the devil came to his to rob and to destroy and who is the source of of most uh, corruption and death and destruction who is the source of most corruption death and destruction are you talking like politically or government or general what kind of entity is most like that the state I can show you historically where the state causes all death or 99% of all death that's right so uh, my point is, I think the government is evil at its core. The government so, is evil at its core? Sure yeah. it is. Um, absolutely. I would have to agree with that. I, but think, I, I think the devil is that active behind government. Because uh, if you see, that's the, the fruits of, of Satan is, is uh, to kill, to rob, and to destroy. And that's what uh, the most active thing in the world and, and that part is government okay right now now let me ask you a question though okay now i i'd 100 percent agree with you and i've made that case for actually josh and i both made that case and josh is my brother for about six months non-stop pounding on it and now i think it's time to come back and pose the question this way though was and josh started to do it about three weeks ago i believe it was say who is government can we go anywhere and grab somebody and say this is government? <laughs> is that problem? The people that we choose, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So if we all pretty much we can't get anybody to call in and say that government is not the source of death, destruction, rape, and pillage, right? Yep. But who is government? We are. We are, yeah. Right, so we, so you look at this issue of voting. I mean, and that, that's really at the core of the problem of voting. So we all know that we have inherent liberties, right? Whether whether they're taken from us or not, we know that inside we have them. Yeah. Is it morally right to go vote one way or the other on those liberties that we know are ours? You know, I was, I I was very involved in Ron Paul. Thing. And uh, you know, I I really more now going towards your side, and uh, see that's no point to vote neither. Yeah. Right, and, and if you listen to Ron Paul, if you really listen to his message, and not to the message of the people that want you to vote for it, but if you listen to Ron Paul's message, his message isn't one of him being able to provide liberty. He never advocates for us voting him in to give us liberty, ever. Yeah. Only the people that want him to win think that we need to vote him in for him to give us liberty. They just want that one good guy to give them back their liberty, to give them back their small government. Now, he would totally disagree with that concept. I I took the Ron Paul signs down from my store because I couldn't take the Ron Paul supporters coming in there and telling me about how we have to get him in to be free. I'm not having it anymore because Ron Paul would never, ever agree with that. That's right. The one guy can't do it. Well, it's not even about one guy can't do it. Government he doesn't believe do that he gives you liberty. That's right. He would never have the people vote him in to give them liberty. He would never agree with that concept. If you asked him to his face, he would tell you that that's foolish. He doesn't believe that he, your liberties come from him. Does he? No, no. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Claudio, thanks for the call. It was beautiful. Right, uh, you know, Aaron, i got to tell you, I'm, I'm experiencing some mighty powerful cognitive dissonance, dissonance right now. And and for somebody who's not familiar with that terminology, that's when uh, what you believe in your head does not match up with the way you act. 
And right now I'm realizing, going all the way back to when I was 18 and the first time I ever went out and registered to vote and part- started participating in the process, and, and all along the way I have bought into this belief that somehow we as conservatives, we as Christians, we as freedom-loving people had a responsibility and a duty to go out and vote and participate in the process. And I remember even as much as, golly, six months ago, I was chastising people for not voting, for not participating in the process. And now I'm I'm realizing, it's, I, I love the way, you know, Claudia just put it right there in terms of uh, the, the devil is the one who's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's the government doing it and tying it back into that the, the other hour with uh, Hillbilly's call about how uh, the devil tempted Jesus with this idea of governmental power that really, oh, it almost feels like I've been doing the devil's work. And and it's just, it's really bothering me right now. Well, let me give you an, an analogy there. of when People can't understand the evil that lays inside every man. And I'm not trying to procrastinate against women, but I'll just do them a favor and just keep it to men being evil. You mean discriminate against them? Right. right. right, right. Um, long story short, um, Nazi Germany, at the fall of Nazi Germany, you had an occupation of by the Russians, right? Right. Especially in the very uh, beginning of the Berlin area and things like that, you had a, a mass occupation by the Russians. Documented. What they've documented, not I mean, that would be what they know happened. They know that at least a million women in the first three to four days of the occupation of Berlin, a million women were raped by Russian men, okay? A million women. And I hate using statistics like that because the, the human brain tends to um, write off statistics that go over about, what what is it? I can't remember. Like what. a hundred. You get, you get up over, I mean, it starts getting imaginary. I think it's actually like 30-something, as they say, oh, really? <laughs> where, you, uh, where the mind starts to wander and doesn't fully grasp. But I want people to try and grasp at this time. A million women, okay? We're talking in a couple days' time. Now, you got to take that concept and make it more personal. Those men that raped those women, a lot of them probably had wives. A lot of them were probably good men. They weren't just, they're they're not nameless, faceless people, okay? But they were entities of the state which sanctioned what they did. Would those million men have went and raped a million women under any other circumstance? And people wonder why government is so violent. Government is people who are inherently evil. How can you go vote in somebody that's evil to rule over you? But we got to choose the lesser of two evils, Aaron. Or we got to choose the right guy. Now, let me ask you something. Out of those million women that got raped, do you think that any of those guys weren't good guys? That's the whole freaking army raping people. You don't rape a million women with ten guys. You give men power, and they're evil. So why would you give any man power over you to decide your liberties? If you do, you become a Jew in Nazi Germany. 458-TALK is the number. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, this is Ted. Ted, go ahead. Uh, yeah, my uncle years ago asked me when he was alive... Uh, what I thought of our presidential candidates, and, you know, he's speaking of Republican and Democrat, and I said, it's a lot like uh, being shot or stabbed, you know, and, uh, you know, who wants that choice? And I totally agree with you. What, what uh, I don't get is why so many people, it's such a simple thing on your freedoms, you know, why it has to be explained to people, you know, what what is right and wrong, you know. I mean, if I don't like potatoes don't eat them but i i don't need to uh legislate my neighbor that he can't eat them you know or that he must eat them yeah and and, you know i mean machiavelli is like required reading from you know uh, for most of our our political leaders in the world and you know if a person reads you know the different methods of manipulating societies and you know you, you know people just don't a lot of people realize you know that School is an indoctrination. You know, it really doesn't matter what you learn as long as when they say charge that hill, you do it. Sure. But, uh, 
it's just pathetic that people need to have explained to them that rights are things that you can't vote away. And, and things like, uh, like hunting, nobody thought hunting was for, you know, guns were for hunting back a long time ago. That's just like breathing. Well, you know, we just kind of took that for granted. Guns are to overthrow an oppressive government. When all else fails, you vote with your trigger finger. You know, let's hope it doesn't get that far, but, I mean, that's what it's for. I, and it doesn't need to go that far. I'd like to give you a, a something refreshing. I agree. Um, it doesn't have to go that far, but that's the purpose. You know, you don't need an AK-47 to, to hunt, I agree, but that's not why we have them. Well, sure, but we're not talking uh, second. We're going to talk Second Amendment issues. I'm going to laugh about the fact that they're every aspect of that AK-47 is regulated. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, here's something interesting about the whole voting concept that I'd never thought of. Um, a couple of Army guys came by, uh, not together, but a couple of different Army guys have come by the store recently that I own. And um, they were uh, PCS. And, is that the right word, Steve? Uh, yes, yeah, permanent change of station, PCS. Okay, but they they were, um, well, what is it when they're getting out? I think it's still a That's PCS. Fair, okay, it's still a PCS. Okay, uh, there's a couple different guys getting out, and um, they were up for re-enlistment, and they, both their stories were exactly the same, but one guy was way more articulate in the way that he told me um, about it. And basically, they both decided to get out, and I asked them both why were they getting out, and they both cited the same reason for getting out, and it was the National Defense Authorization Act, which I thought was very interesting and very refreshing to me that uh, guys in the military would recognize that as being ultimately oppressive on the people, even if the people themselves can't recognize it. And uh, this more articulate gentleman, I said to him, I said, well, don't you think that being in the military... If um, things were to get a little bit chaotic and this government was oppressive and started to uh, enforce something like the National Defense Authorization Act and started imprisoning people in FEMA camps or whatever, you know, FEMA is putting out solicitations for people to run internment camps. That's on their own website. So, you know, in light of something like that, you think, well, you know, um, wouldn't it be better to be on the other side? And he said, well, don't you think that by staying in that I'm giving my consent to that? And I thought, well, sh that's no different than voting. Sure, of course. If you stay in. Condoning it. Yeah. You're giving your consent to Americans being indefinitely detained and put into prison without a trial. Sure. Of course, he's absolutely right. How could I argue with him? Whatever my good intention was for him to stay in, he's right. He needs to get out, right? That, that's true, yeah. But, uh, you, there isn't really any solution other than if you at least know you're not free. You know, free isn't just a word like love or hate or anything. There's so many different levels. I'd have to disagree a little bit. I think people need to start realizing they are free. That, you'd have to explain that one to me. I don't feel free. Right. Oh, the reason you don't yeah. feel free... Because you don't act free. Well, I act free, but if I don't pay my taxes and I stay out of it, you know, years of hard work, they will take from me. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is collectively, people have got to stop asking for their liberties. Oh, I agree. You need to do that by thinking free, though. Um, hey, thanks for the call, brother. We're up against a bunch of phone calls here. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? This is Al. Al, go ahead. Hey, um, I'm I'm curious on your ideology or thought process on when to choose to uh, participate in the government and and not. You know, you're and you make very good valid points on why not the voter participate in voting, yet you'll participate in getting a driver's license and a business license and paying your taxes. Right. Um. I, I, uh, Josh and I actually went that route. Uh, actually, all my brothers did quite a long time ago, and we didn't. Uh, we got rid of our driver's licenses and hunting licenses and all of those things, and we proceeded to continue to do those things without them. And we actually hmm. won in court quite a few times. Believe it or not, we won in court for a couple of years running. Uh, I remember my brother Caleb in particular was in court every other day, it seemed like. And, and this is down in Idaho, right? Yes, and he won time and time again. Ultimately, what happened was, is they got tired of us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and Josh 
um, was very educated, self-educated on the legal systems in and out. And he used common law, what had, what was written down as precedents in common law, and kept winning for us in court over and over and over again. He would sit with us and help us out. Obviously, we learned things uh, along the way with him. And yes, we kept winning, but ultimately what happened was is they just came to where we were at and served a warrant on all of us. That was the exact same warrant. It said we were all driving the same truck on the same road at the exact same time uh, without driver's licenses. And now they didn't pull us over. They just served us a warrant that said that. That was their reason for giving us a warrant. All of us, the same truck, the same road, the same time. They just, generic warrant, put different names on all of it, the exact same warrant. I mean, is, is that ridiculous or what? Yeah. Okay. So they pick us up and they haul us all into, into jail. And then they take us into court a little bit later, and the judge says, basically, this is the gist of what he said. Now, I'm not quoting him because it's been years now, but the gist of what he says was, is, I've been authorized to do whatever I have to do to make you guys quit. Okay? He said, if that means you never get out of jail again for whatever reason I want to come up with, you're not getting out of jail. And Josh and Caleb and my dad spent six months in jail not believing him I actually got out a couple days later they let me out because I was a minor I think they were pretty worried about it there you have it Josh finally gave in my dad gave in my brothers gave in be right back all right welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR it's a production of Bighorn Enterprises in Far North Tactical joining us from Far North Tactical this morning it's Aaron Bennett good morning Aaron good morning Steve Aaron I think you're crazy yeah definitely so let me finish that thought there for anybody that uh, listening to the break um, so basically my brothers and my dad, and I would have also tried to stand on principle and they spent uh, about six months in jail. All of them did. And they were there without being charged with anything. I would like to clarify that never got charged. Okay. They were being just held in limbo. That never happens in America. Sure. It doesn't. So. It wasn't until they finally gave in, and here was the conditions, okay? The conditions were that they would get a hunting license and a driver's license, and any charge that the state had ever brought against them would be immediately dropped. They would have a clear record for anything that they'd ever done. That was the same offer that was made to me, and I actually didn't get a chance to refuse or or not. They let me out. I think they were pretty worried about the fact that I was only 17 at the time. And which is funny because when I went into court, um, they brought me in alone, <clears throat> and I told him that I wouldn't say anything without my parent there, an illegal adult. And he's like, "You don't have a right to a legal adult today," <laughs> and he sentenced me to uh, nine months in prison. And actually, I I was went in and was serving my time, and they let me out a couple of days later. And they, they called it a bump out. They didn't have enough room, so they bumped me out. But they never did call me back. They, at any time, they said, if we call you, you have to come back in and submit yourself back to jail. And, um, and once again, your, your, quote, crime for this, if somebody is just joining us, is that you tore up, you got rid of your driver's license and your hunting no, license. No, actually, our crime was for all driving the same truck on the same road at the same time without driver's licenses, even though they, they didn't pull us over and give us that um, warrant at that time. They came and picked us up and gave us that warrant. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it, I know it sounds fictitious, but... Uh, so there, there's your answer. Um, ultimately, uh, we decided that the fight wasn't to sit there and fight um, our the government outright and say, hey, you know, these are our liberties. Even though for qu- quite a number of years, we won in court saying that we have the right to drive. We have the right to... Um, hunt or whatever else right mm-hmm. so uh to, to answer al there we we went that route and you bas- you've basically now you've taken the fight to a different level and you're going after people's hearts and minds and now that you're making a difference and you're getting people it's, to decide be- hey i'm not going to participate in any of this now you're getting attacked by the people who thought that you were their ally right so i what i realized was is that government is people because i never got pulled over I never got taken to jail. I never had any of those things happen to me from government. Those things happen to me from people. I would like anybody to go find a dead Jew and ask him who killed him. Hitler didn't kill him. Okay, so my fight had to come here. 
in the hearts and minds of people because it's not government that oppressed me. Now, like I said earlier in the show, Josh and I spent the last six months pointing to people, showing people that the state is the destroyer, right? The state causes all oppression. All oppression that you want to talk about, I can point it to the state, all the way to the millions and millions of people that have died since the turn of the 19th century. The government killed them, okay? Now I want to take that back and say, who's government? That's why I don't renounce my U.S. citizenship. That's why I don't get rid of my driver's license. There's a fight to be fought, and I'm fighting it right now. Which you can't do if you're indefinitely detained for driving the same truck at the same time with a bunch of Right. The the indefinite detention act is really a personal issue for me because I've seen it happen. I watched my brothers and my dad sit in jail for six months. Uh, We had a family business that I had to run by myself at the age of 17 waiting for them to get out, which I probably didn't do very efficiently. Hmm. You know, actually, uh, some of my good friends came and worked f- uh, for free to help us out they, for six months. Um, slaved away, basically, at slave labor because it was for free to help keep our business going. But anyway, not that anybody in Idaho cared, and I don't think anybody up here would care. Look at Schaefer Cox sitting in jail for... Um, conspiring to kill people that didn't exist. And we can argue all day whether he was a jackass or not. Think guilty as charged. All right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm not everybody knows that I was at odds with him, vehemently at odds with him for quite a while. But it didn't change the fact that I still went down and testified in his trial that it was horse manure that he was being put on trial in the first place. And I appealed as well as I could to the jury saying how how can you, you know, how can you do this to this guy, basically? You know, I made my appeal that um, just the best way that I knew how, and I don't really, I don't like him at all. But he doesn't deserve to be where he's at because he didn't hurt anybody. And yet, they did, these days, it is some, it is a crime merely to talk about killing someone. That doesn't exist. Well, whether or not, that, he, he did, however, talk about killing specific judges and specific troopers. He did who, not get hammered to the wall. He did not get hammered to the wall for talking about killing specific anybody. So that was Lonnie Vernon in a separate trial. He got hammered to the wall for conspiring to kill people that didn't exist. That's that's the facts. That's the facts. 458-TALK is the number. All of our lines are on hold, Aaron. What shall we do with them? Uh, let's take another call. Then I wanted to get another testimonial of not voting. 458-TALK is the number. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning, it's Kevin. How you doing? Kevin, good. What's on your mind? Well, I just listening, of course, and and you know I've been through experiences like this guy in my life, and and uh, I know what he's talking about, and by them arresting him and everything. Um, my question is, who gave that judge the authority to do what he did? Because that's the person that's in trouble. Well, the judge doesn't have any authority to put, or he has, he didn't have any authority personally to grab, put hands on me and put me in jail, right? Somebody gave him authority to take care of you no matter what it took. Well, what I'm saying is is that for somebody to put hands on me and put me in jail and to monitor me in jail and to keep me in jail and to feed me in jail and to do everything else to me in jail, that wasn't the judge, was it? No, but he was told to do so. Right, but we we got to get out of this mentality that him being told the, in the Nuremberg trials, the people that, the judges that sat in the Nuremberg trials said that all those Nazis that murdered and raped and pillaged and, didn't, didn't matter that they were told to it do. Didn't they matter were they were told for, to do it for following orders. They were they hung. were hung for following orders because there was a higher duty to their fellow man, right? So, is it the judge's fault because somebody was giving him orders? Well, that's, that's the whole question, but at the same time... Or is you know, it the I've, fault of the guy that put the handcuffs on me and led me back and then handed me over to the warden who led me back and then put me in a concrete cell and the guy that fed me and the guy that monitored me and the guy that watched me? Well, I, I'm about to fully agree with what's going on. It's people that are the corruption of our government, not the government necessarily itself. I just got We are talking. the government. Right. I talked to the ombudsman yesterday, and you'll love to hear what he had to say. I talked to my lawyer yesterday, you'll love what he had to say. And I talked to DNR official, Kerwin Krauss, yesterday, and you'd love to hear what he had to say. Pick one, because we're almost out of time here, Kevin. 
All right. Well, basically, the ombudsman told me, he says, Kevin, he says, when are you going to write your book? I says, I don't, I don't think I dare write a book. Uh, the state's not going to like that. He says, no, I want you to be able to write that book without fear, without worrying about it. Now, what does that tell you? That they're going to drop the charges? No, that they're going to, all of them are going to face charges. All of us are. Hey, thanks for the call, Kevin. 458-TALK is the number. Before we go there, uh, Aaron, did you want to take another call or did you want to talk to... Oh, just, do you think you can give your short version there, uh, Abe Tolman? <clears throat> Abe Tolman? Hey, uh, should we spell that? A- spell, spell the last name. Is it Abraham Tolman? I think technically my name is Abraham. I mean, yes, it is. That's that's what my mother and my father named me. Okay, well, uh, just wanted to get your testimony of why you don't vote. Well, if you would have asked me like six months ago, I would have said I'm thinking about voting. And if you would have asked me two years ago, I would have vehemently said I hate the Bennett brothers because they're crazy. Um, but I would say that for my own... You uh, didn't vote for us? <laughs> I think I looked to see who was running against you. <laughs> no, is, that, I'm, is that honest? <clears throat> no, actually, honestly, I was uh, I was just a teenager trying to uh, figure things out. I didn't actually vote. I was too busy trying to make money. So voting was just this thing I had got in the way of, you know, my, my free time. Um, but I would say that, that where I got to the no voting is, you know, literally reading... And educating myself and and realizing how our government is supposed to work, how it works, you know, along with my personal faith and more realization about that, basically everything adds up that I, I, I can't tell you, Aaron, that I don't like the way you're living your life. And so, therefore, I'm going to vote on somebody who's going to make rules over you and change them, even if even if it's rules that I like and it's everything that I agree with I can't control you and that's really what it comes down to for me Abe can I tell you that it was actually you your phone call on the on election day that helped kind of push me over the edge oh, well as, as, as we were talking I, I mentioned earlier that I had a number of phone calls with people that told me why I should not vote and nobody who managed to get me a, a good reason why I should and I think it was your phone call in particular that really got under my skin it was like a little worm that burrowed its way into my brain that idea that I do not have the right to go and force someone to do what I want them to do. No matter what it is, no matter whether I think that gay marriage is right or wrong, I don't have the right to go and forbid somebody from sinning. That, that, and, that, and that for me is, is really what it boils down to. I, I have no problem telling everybody that I am a, I'm a devout Christian. I absolutely believe that Jesus Christ died for me. I mean, I, I, I can go on for hours and talk about that. And I also will tell you, I cannot stand the idea of gay marriage. I don't like abortion. I don't like people who use drugs. But you know what? I also know that I have a mandate. I only have one mandate in my faith, and that's and that's to love. I mean, I've I've heard so many people argue, well, yeah, but we serve a God who judges. It's like, yeah, that's his job, not mine. <laughs> my job is to just love the person. In fact, I also believe that there are scriptures that say that if I don't love, and if that person doesn't see a change in their life because then it's actually my fault not their fault so i th- you know this this whole idea of we mandate to people you know change you know no gay marriage it's not allowed or you know no drugs i mean all of these things it's me telling you what you can and can't do i can't do that i cannot tell somebody I, yes it's true that the, the world around me might go to pot because because People are allowed to do whatever they want. Prostitution might become legal. You know, I mean, people might be given and taking blah, blah, blah. But you know what? The truth is, is, it, is if the world is going to change, if I absolutely believe that the world is going to change, the only thing that I have given, that I'm given authority to do is to love. That's it. So, Aaron? I'm going to have to take back from Glenn Beck and give it back to Aaron Burr where it belongs and say, be the change you want to see. That's exactly right. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Yeah, Rich Hall here. Rich Hall, what's on your mind? I just can't get into the deep philosophical weeds of some of the discussion here, voting or not to vote, however. You put Thursday a weed catcher night. on it, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night was a good example of a little prayer of a chance on a small local level. That uh, I can't remember anything that got the communists got voted down, you know, Five to four. I just had to smile and cheer. But this upcoming local election, both city and borough, uh, there is a chance where we can at least have some influence and reduce the 
pain in the behind that uh, our present administration is doing. No, I, I, hang on. I, that's what people coming into my store all week have been trying to tell me. Okay, but I totally disagree that putting Lance Roberts or somebody like him up there, not saying anything about his merit, okay, but you're not going to put him in there to give us more liberty. That that whole concept needs to be flushed down the toilet. Okay, we don't need Lance Roberts. We don't need Luke Hopkins. We don't need anybody. What about Michael Dukes? Do we need him? Uh, well, you know, I'm sure that Michael Dukes probably voted ways that people wanted him to. Um, Thursday or whatever night you just said, but yeah. that same guy also voted that you should have your property taken away if you don't pay your taxes. That's fact. So, whatever he decides should be law. Do you do you agree that a man's property should be taken from him if he doesn't pay? No, I don't. I'm okay, probably, I'm probably so, so worst, you so you defender. don't you yeah, don't you agree are. you don't agree with everything that Michael Dukes agrees with, do you? No, I do not. Okay, However, so why why should he be in a position to lord over you? At what point does it become not okay for him to vote away your liberties? He voted that you, not just me, but you, should have your property taken away if you don't pay your taxes. So you don't agree with everything that he says? No, I don't. That's right. So he doesn't have any business. Who knows how better to rule your life, Michael Dukes or you? Me, of course. Absolutely. So he has no business lording over you, does he? You, you're not familiar with my background, but I'm no. probably the number he's, one he's the, most offender. Just so you know, Rich Hall is the, the dog musher who keeps having people come out and try to take his dogs from him because people around I, him don't I, like I, the dogs. I know who he is. All right. But he called the show saying, we have a chance. Now, people always tell me that's that was why I took all the Ron Paul signs down around my stores because everybody came in and would say, we have a chance at liberty. What a joke. In completely unrelated news, I understand that the lottery is now up to $6 million, and if you go out and buy a ticket right now, you have a chance to win <laughs> that $6 million. Rich, I appreciate your call. We are packed, packed with phone calls. We're going to leave you here. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? It's Winston. Winston. We've go, we got to go fast, brother. Okay. Uh, real, real short. Uh, what I called in last hour about was the 78% of the people Yep. that a registered vote in the in the state of Alaska did not vote uh, in the last election. Good for them. What Sounds like they're listening what, to us. What, uh, uh, what difference? Uh, uh, what difference has it made? What difference did uh, it make for the people that did vote? Well, uh, uh, the the people that did vote had the opportunity to choose the state that's going to point the gun at us. Right. So let me ask you: Does those seventy-eight percent not have a right to liberty? They they absolutely have a right to liberty. Not according but, to the people that voted. I understood, but they 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 never stood. They 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 never did anything to guarantee their own liberty. Right, but do um, does it does a man earn his liberty? A man does not earn uh, a liberty. Yes, liberty he earns. Of uh, uh, rights he does not earn. A right he get he has. Please, right, please, uh, and what are, you, what are you voting away? You're voting away rights, which we call liberties, right? I, I don't vote away no right. Right, uh, but people uh, do, okay? So though, basically, by, by going vote. down and voting, Winston, you're saying that that 78% doesn't have a right to any rights. They have no liberties. You absolutely no, no, are no, advocating no, for that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is when the 78% lose their liberties, it's their fault because they did not. No, uh, I'd have to uh, say that the person that voted against whatever ordinance was taking right. away liberties deserves to lose his liberties because he didn't stand up for him and he said, "I'm willing to take the bet that I might win my liberties." I was gonna, I actually totally agree with that. That basically to say that the people who are not voting, it's kind of like saying, "Well, the guy who just got shot in the head by the serial murder, it's actually his fault because he didn't protect himself." Or the guy who didn't win the lottery ticket because he didn't buy one. Right, exactly. the 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 guy who's you know, the guy who's not voting in this case. That's like saying it's the Jews' fault they they got exactly put in because they didn't because they didn't defend themselves. Basically, the the bottom line is the criminal here is the person pointing the gun. It's the person voting. I think one of the wisest men that I've ever read. And I wish I have searched everywhere trying to find who he was because I read I read his quotes one time in a book. I've never been able to find who he was again, but he was a guy that went through the Holocaust. He was a Jew. 
And um, basically the sum of what he said was, is by trying to save ourselves, we all doomed ourselves to our fate. And what he meant by that is, if you read the whole thing, was if the Jews would have stood together for liberty, together, not tried to vote, not tried to work the political system, if they would have stood together, they were in the millions. If they would have stood together, they wouldn't have suffered that fate. By trying to gain their own liberties, they doomed themselves to their fate. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, is this Cecily? Yes, it is. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, it's, I, I'm so glad that people are, uh, that I can hear other people realizing what voting is about. <laughs> Boy, it took years. But uh, I, I, uh, I read in the Bible about when Jesus was washing his disciples' feet, he was down below their head and their heart. And he says to them that, Though you hold me in high esteem, let no man hold their head or heart above you, yours, then lest you would surely follow evil. That's the idea is that the same thing about the duty, the higher duty of, you know, even though you were told to do this and that, and you knew in your head and heart it was wrong. So even in, their, in, the, in the, the Bible, the very book that all the Christians want to go kill people for, says don't do it can you can you say that first part again where where jesus um at the last supper he washed his disciples feet yeah and he was below their head and his had his head below their head in their heart and he said that it though you hold me in high esteem let no man hold his head or heart above your own lest you would surely follow evil that's the thing is is in each and every so, so human being, if, God put His His self. If a person was to take that to heart and believe that, could he could he in any kind of consciousness vote for Mitt Romney? It couldn't vote at all because that well, then he would put someone above his own head and heart. Anytime you take your own uh, uh, ideal of, uh, of life and, and liberty and 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 put it upon somebody else as if you were God. You know, as far as all of the rules and regulations that man has made, they've put themselves above God, like to tell anybody what they can and cannot do. Right, so a a man can't serve two masters. Right, he has to serve himself or somebody else. And if you want to be a slave, then go ahead and consider somebody like Mitt Romney or, or, or even Ron Paul. You know, it. I mean, he has some good ideas. You know, stop going over there and killing everybody, so that you can live better than them. I mean, it, it, you know, uh, and signing up to be a mercenary, be, you know, so that you could raise your kids on, on, on the the murder and and theft. <laughs> Cecily, man, I, I'll tell you, I, I love you, sister. I, 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 I love the way you think, and I love the way you express yourself. We are coming up against the clock. Gotta let you go. Uh, Aaron, I'm curious here in terms of, you know, you look at the, this this change of thinking that I'm, I'm hearing going on in other people besides myself. Uh, what kind of effect does that have on international events and in politics? Because, I mean, you think about it, it, you know, we're exporting democracy. We're going into places like Iraq and Afghanistan and making them put up a, a, a form of government that we think would be best for them. And our troops don't agree with that, by and large. And we have the highest suicide rate we've ever had in the military. I mean, that's actually never not been a phenomenon before, ever. is it? No, not not like it is now. And, and a lot of it, I think you're right, it has to do with the cognitive dissidence of being forced to do something that they inherently just, I'm doing something that I know is wrong, but I'm still doing it, and I'm trying to tell myself that it's right. Steve, you signed up to join the military, right? I did. No did, you, did, you, did you sign up to protect your country, as in, in your mind, you didn't want people messing with your your family? Well, right. I, that was. I mean, the the, the oath that I took was uh, to support and defend the Constitution so, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So, so then, and this is my assumption. I honestly think that a lot of the young men and women who join the military and armed forces have the exact same idea. They're 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 doing it because they want to quote unquote defend their country, and then they get turned around and they get sent to a foreign country, bomb. Random people that they don't know, mm-hmm. you know, and and they're and they're making it easier and easier to do this. Now we have drones, so we don't even have to look at the people as we kill them. And then you have suicide rates. You have you have these poor people coming back, going, 
you know, this this was the worst thing that happened to me. I mean, whether it was a they were they were gone from their families, b they were in a foreign country just away from their friends friends and countrymen, or c they were actually aggressing against somebody that and they didn't know why. I mean, th- I mean, I don't, I don't even know where to go with that. That's just the yeah, a guy just uh, texted me. Actually, Jeremiah Patterson just did, and he made a good point. Yeah, where is he? Talking about voting. Um, he said, look at Natalie, Matt Want, and Michael Dukes. They're all in the assembly. And I and I know I like to poke at Dukes, but just because I like to poke at the ideology in the first place. I know he's trying to do good things, but that's part of the problem, in my opinion. They're all on there, and we're no more free than we were before they got there. That's so because what, we what need do we, more people like that. Right, than, we just uh-huh, need no. to get Lance Roberts. We just need on more there. power. We just right. more, need more power on our side. Is literally well, right. And, and right. even even when you get a vote that goes the way you want it to, like the like the Thursday night we had the caller saying, oh, we we had a glimmer of hope because it was a five to four vote. It was a five to four vote. That means that it all hung on one person. One person. And wasn't there people on the other the, side of that decision. five to four vote that are dissatisfied with it? Absolutely there are. Who but lost? they don't matter they because lost. our side matters. Oh, oh, no, no. They didn't really lose. You see, because now it's gone back to renegotiation in that borough wa- labor contract. Or if it's like the rest of Americans, you can't lose when we're the ones who are right because we're always right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which, that, doesn't that explain, uh, you know, every war that America yeah. has been involved in since, well... I guess technically we haven't had a war. And that right there is the problem. When I think that I'm more right than you, and so therefore I oppress my right on you because you're wrong. You're just, no, you're not necessarily wrong. You're just dumb. You're just stupid. You're, you're not, just not right. intelligent. <laughs> I think the greatest part is is that we go out and oppress the world to give them um, liberty. I mean, that concept in and of itself is just ridiculous. But Not we, at all. I mean, it ties in completely with uh, the book 1984. But what I'm saying is is we we want to force liberty on everybody else and wonder why it's so messed up when we come home and have that same attitude. We want to force our liberty on everybody else. We want to get Mitt Romney and to force these liberals into lockstep or vice versa. They want to get Obama and to force the Republicans into lockstep. It's but the slave, most sophisticated. Slavery it's, is freedom. It's the most sophisticated form of warfare ever come down the pike. Ignorance is strength. Is it? <laughs> well, have you, have you read? I mean, we are living in 1984, man. We are totally there, and we have all bought into it. it it's like somebody is speaking to us while we sleep and telling us what to think. So I'm, I'm going to steal the last few few seconds here. When I walked in here, I I told Aaron that uh, I I've, I had a thought at about 8:45 this morning, and then I tried to do some research on it, and of, of course I I didn't find enough fast enough. Basically, what it was is I had this thought that again I'm a Christian. <laughs> Um, and I've been told forever that the enemy has no power over me except which that I give it to him. And I would say that in the exact same case with the federal government or any government over you, it has no power except which that you consent to give to it. Sure, and I think that Cecily made that point, uh, drove it home. Very, from, very well. Straight out of the Bible, in my opinion. That's yep. great. All right, well, of course, uh, Action Point today uh, is going to have to require you to do a little soul searching and, and just ask yourself, if you had all that power, would you become evil too? Yeah, probably. Anyway, I appreciate you being my special guest today, Steve. Thanks for having Abe, me. thanks for coming in. All right, we are up against the clock. As far as I know, we'll be back again next week with another edition of Patriots Lament. In the meantime, check us out online, patriotslament.blogspot.com. And the YouTube channel is Radio Free Fairbanks. So you can look that up, listen to previous shows, also KFAR660.com, where you can listen to archived shows. Today's show will not be posted probably until Thursday of next week, as I am going out in pursuit of the great Alaskan ungulate. You can wish me luck on that. All right. Up next, it's Health Talk right here on KFAR. It's Local Talk Radio. Have a beautiful weekend.